Welcome to the March 2009 edition of Ask the Commissioner with USA South Commissioner Rita Wiggs. Uh, I'm Kyle Bauman. I'm a senior pitcher for CNU's baseball team, and I just wanted to ask, what is the role of the Student Athlete Advisory Committee? Kyle, to help me answer that question, I have Erin Moykin here with me today, and she is the president of our conference SAC and also uh, the, the works with her uh, on campus SAC at Christopher Newport University. Uh, just to explain what SAC is, the SAC stands for Student Athlete Advisory Committee, and each of our institutions have a SAC, and, and each conference in the NCAA has a SAC, and this is required by NCAA legislation. Uh, to help explain a little bit what SAC is and what they do, uh, Aaron's going to help me with that this morning. And we're going to start with, uh, Aaron, with uh, your campus SAC. And what kinds of things do, do you do with your campus SAC, and what is their involvement uh, with your athletics on your campus? Thank you. Well, um, at the campus level, we hope to... Um, do community service, but also the main important role is that student athletes' voices are being heard. If there are any concerns or any positive um, outcomes coming from teams, we hope to share these outcomes and positive stories with all the athletes. And so it's a time that students, student athletes from all the teams can come together and really um, be one and voice their concerns, but also um, we depend on our campus SACs to get in the community and give back to the surrounding um, schools or the YMCA or various other activities just to involve the student athletes in more than athletics. Now, what kinds of things have you done in the community here at Christopher Newport and also uh, in hearing from our other institutions, what kinds of things have, have they done? Well, at Christopher Newport here, we're very active in the um, local schools. Um, Coach Ross, one of the basketball assistant coaches, is really great at helping us get into the schools to read. Um, but at Methodist, I know they're very involved with Special Olympics, and I think Greensboro is as well. And Special Olympics has been very helpful. Um, they also participate in, all the schools have participated in Think Pink, um, and initiatives like that. I know during the fall, soccer, um, some women's soccer teams did it. I know it's very big during basketball season. So mainly we hear about um, collecting food um, and shoes in some respects. We have a a coach here collect all the old tennis shoes to send to Africa so I think it's really um, unique to each school but it's basically a lot of it has to do with children and giving back in various ways all right now our conference SAC has a couple of initiatives that have uh, actually started with our student athlete advisory committee uh, one is cans across the conference and the other is uh, pennies for purpose um, talk to us a little bit about about those two initiatives well, we have some, our Kansas Cross Conference and Pennies for a Purpose is basically the conference um, coming together kind of in a little rivalry, um, a little competition, but it's all for a good cause. Um, in the fall, we do Kansas Cross the Conference around Thanksgiving to hopefully provide food to a local um, food bank or wherever you would like to donate um, collected canned food. So we encourage all the teams on all the campuses to collect as much as they can, which may be internal competition between teams, um, but we also compete among schools, but in the end, our goal is to raise as many items as we can um, to give back um, and hopefully provide a better Thanksgiving for some people that might not have it. And in the spring, we recently started it last year, this is Pennies for the Purpose. And Pennies for a Purpose is collecting loose change through the month of March um, to donate to any local organization that you'd really like. Um, we thought a spring initiative would be great to help the community again. And um, also some other initiatives SAC likes look into a sportsmanship and it's great that we're looking into the sportsmanship awards um, some of the sportsmanship awards have come out of the SAC um, the individual awards that you see given out the all sportsmanship team um, came out of the student athlete advisory committee from the ideas of the student athletes so it's really cool to see what student athletes have and we can see it it actually happens so it's pretty cool now mo <clears throat> moving on to the national SAC which you are a member and the <clears throat> each conference in the uh, NCAA in Division III uh, can have a, a representative on the national SAC, uh, and it's a three-year uh, term. And then you have a, a partner conference, and so when our representative rotates off after their three-year term, then the, our partner conference, their representative will rotate on. But currently, Aaron is uh, the USA South representative on the national SAC, 
Uh, tell us a little bit about the National SAC. I know that's been an exciting experience for you, a, a very learning, a lot of learning going on, as well as a nurturing experience. So talk to us a little bit about uh, what happens uh, in the National SAC. Well, National SAC is a great experience. Um, we get to travel a lot of places, which is a great benefit. But um, I really enjoy National SAC because I've learned um, student athletes, there isn't just the game. Um, there's a whole legislative side of athletics that many student athletes really don't know about it. Um, on your campus SACs, you may briefly in the fall talk about legislation. And the main purpose you're talking about that legislation is because we want to hear the student athletes' opinions. For example, the AED proposal just passed, and that's to require um, head coaches to have AED certification along with first aid and CPR, which is really, really important. And it started from the student athletes being concerned that there, there might be a risk if someone goes down on the field, that if a coach doesn't know on the first isn't on the first on the scene and they don't know um, CPR AED it could potentially harm a student athlete so it's really exciting um, and we get excited about that type of stuff at the national level and we encourage the conference and the individual institutions to really look into the legislative process um, so it's been eye-opening about all the legislation that really does go into the NCA in Division 3 that many student athletes probably don't consider additionally we continue community service um, initiatives um, currently Division 3 SAC is looking into a potential partnership. Um, right now we're not ready to roll that out yet because it's just in the early stages. Um, so we're just looking at a bunch of continued um, community service, but we mainly want to hear from all the student athletes and it's important to voice your opinion and that's what we take. We don't vote just how we feel. We vote how our student athletes um, feel is most important on the current legislative issues and you know you get to go some pretty neat places and um, go to NCA convention which is an amazing experience in January where you actually sit on the legislation floor. So it's just a bunch of fun traveling across the country meeting new student athletes and there's plenty of opportunities for us. Right. Well, we've been lucky to have Aaron on the national uh, SAC as well as uh, president of our SAC. Uh, she's been uh, very good with communicating with, with uh, the conference office as well as uh, with our athletic directors and administrators. So hopefully uh, this gives you an idea of uh, Student Athlete Advisory Committee and uh, their role within the uh, athletic uh, structure on our campuses and within the conference.